All right, welcome back, everybody. So in the next presentation, we have with us Romando Bergeno, and he is going to be uh, talking about parametric design workflow. And so, Romando, when you're ready. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Everything good? Um, my name is Raimundo Burgueño, and this is my presentation on parametric design workflow. And um, what I'm going to show you guys is my Baroni Alpha 1 wheel system. It's an algorithm I wrote using Grasshopper to uh, make these wheels and design these wheels. Uh, I've been learning how to do parametric design modeling for like the past three years. And, um, and then about a year into it, I actually I, I met uh, everybody here from Substance. And, uh, and I realized how designer is the same, is, has the same sort of workflow. And I've been sort of implementing both of those worlds together. And um, so a little bit about myself. I'm, uh, I was born and raised here in California. Um, I've been uh, modeling since I was a, a kid. And basically, I just never stopped until I got hired. Um, and uh, and I, since I, when I was a child, I was always very fascinated with the automotive world. And, um, and that's where my, uh, my career has been. Um, uh, in fact, one of my old bosses from Honda is right here. And um, I've been, uh, I've worked for BMW, Audi. Um, uh, most recently, I was at Faraday Future. And right now, I'm, I'm in my own company. And I'm consulting for Karma Automotive, an electric startup. And um, yeah, I'm a super 3D nerd. I, uh, I love every aspect of 3D, um, polygon modeling, parametric, nerve modeling. I just, uh, you know, on my time off, I usually am modeling anyways. And, uh, and my, co uh, my company, my website is Handlebar 3D. And I'm always putting up uh, tutorials and stuff and, um, and longer videos that sort of explain my process. Uh, oh yeah, and that's, a, that's a, one of a, a car I designed and modeled uh, sort of to showcase what I can do because in the automotive world, uh, all your designs get lost in a, in a server and they're never to be seen again, you know, unless it makes it out to production. So um, uh, yeah, that's kind of like what I do. And then, um, so um, some of the benefits of using uh, algorithms for, um, for uh, modeling and designing is that you could do things that you wouldn't be able to do with traditional methods. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I know you could technically do this, but you would need like an Excel spreadsheet and your math book. You know, because a lot of what I do is based on, on mathematical functions. <clears throat> and this is just like a little sort of a, a candle holder I did. And then uh, you could also make algorithms that sort of design for you. Uh, this, uh, these spaceships, uh, when I wrote this algorithm, I didn't know exactly what the end result will look like. I just knew it was going to look pretty. Uh, it's, uh, it's using the sine functions, and it's basically kind of uh, using math to make them. And then as I, and as I run the algorithm, I get the different results, and then I can sort of figure out what they are. So uh, all these three are actually the same, <clears throat> the same exact algorithm, and the only difference between them is like four numbers. But as you can see, they have a whole, like, you know, th this one looks like a little fighter, this looks like a mothership, and this to me always looked like uh, the final boss kind of thing. <clears throat> ah, and then uh, focus your time in design. Um, and to me, this is the most powerful part of uh, using algorithms in your design workflow. It's that all the, the heavy lifting gets done by your algorithm. So then you have time to focus on the, the design aspect of it. You know, um, uh, all these wheels were made in within, within uh, an hour of each other. And, um, and I actually figured out how to sort of close the whole system up. And, uh, and using Substance Designer too. So, um, uh, so I could do my design and my modeling with my algorithm in Grasshopper, and then I could do my texturing in Designer, and then my final rendering is in Modo, but everything's connected. So uh, if, um, if I'm already at the last day, if there's any little aspect I want to change of it, I'm within five minutes of changing it, you know, which before was like impossible because you know, if you wanted to change anything, you had to go to your texture artist or you had to go to your CAD team and you know, remodel everything. But if you keep everything in a parametric workflow, you get um, a lot more freedom, and also a lot, uh, you get uh, more chances to find the design because uh, in, in the design phase, you, know, you only have like two or three shots, but if you do it with parametric design, you could move any of the design elements you want um, instantly to the, very, to the very last second of delivery. So, yeah, and then, um, so that's my email, and, uh, and that's my website, and there you can see my Twitter, my Instagram, where, like, that's where I post up when I, <clears throat> when I put up new videos and stuff. So I'll show you guys how, how that whole process looks like. So 
So this is, uh, uh, I do the, the nerve modeling in Rhino, and then this is how it kind of looks like when, uh, with inside, of, inside of Rhino. And, and, the, and the algorithm is right here, I'll show you. And as you can see, it kind of has a similar look to designer, and it's a, in the same sort of uh, uh, workflow, as in uh, it's, it's, based, it's uh, breaking it up to the, the process, and every point and every uh, design change, I, I make it in my algorithm so I could change it around. And if I, if, I, um, if I sort of like highlight all this, you see all those like connections and cables? That's just, you know, it's getting these measurements, sending them over there, doing this, doing that, and then the end result is, uh, is this wheel. So, hold on. Is this wheel. And then the actual algorithm takes about like, like 30 to 40 seconds to like someone like this one to, to actually from design to, to a model. And, uh, and then if, you go, if I look here, here's where I sort of put all the, the sizes and stuff. And if, I were to, and if I were to sort of change one of these, it would take 30, 40 seconds for, the, you know, for us to see the change. Um, but what I do in my algorithms is I, I sort of build two algorithms, one for the final model and then one for like the design phase. So if I go, uh, if I go over here, and then here's like, kind of like my baking button, and uh, here it's in surface mode, and I go here. See, so what happened, now, now we're in curves. And, uh, and that's the really the, the powerful thing about this sort of approach, is that if, um, if you know, all of a sudden, because I'm in industrial design, where all, every measurement counts, every millimeter counts, and also there's a lot of stuff you can't really, like let's say you were doing a 20 inch wheel, and then all of a sudden the budget comes back and you're gonna change it to a 21 inch wheel. It's not as simple as just scaling it. You know, you kinda have to go through a whole other uh, design cycle. Uh, but with this, it's as easy as, as you know, moving it around. And, it, and, when, and when you see when I move it, everything else kind of moves with it because everything's proportional to itself, you know? And then, um, and then here in the, in the side is, uh, is basically the, the, what I call like the volume changes. And I could sort of change the, the balance of the wheel, uh, the, uh, what I call like the accent extension. And I, I like it a little more subtle. And then like the rim offset, you know? And, and these are just, for, uh, I always put like the main movements that I wanna do here, but everything else is also still, still within, um, you know, I could still change everything if, if I wanted to, to change like the fillet of, uh, of this wheel. Like, er everything is still here. Um, and it's always live. So I could, uh, and also with, um, if I go down here to, let me see, I think it's, yeah, here. If, uh, if for example, if, it went, if we ran this through some simulations and then the engineers come and go, you know what, the middle, it's too, it's too thick, it's too thin, you know, I can move that around and then we can run the simulations again. And then so that's uh, the, the uh, volumes and the, of, of, the, of the main, of the wheel. But then I got the design is this, is this pattern right here. And then that works with uh, over here. And, uh, and if, I, if I move this rotation like that, I'm gonna minimize it like that. So that's the rotation. And then th these are the rows, if I go like that. And then this is like the spoke count. If I go lower, see? And then so, so, you know, as you see this, this, um, um, this pattern move and change, each of those patterns I could spit out a, 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 a wheel if I wanted to. And, um, uh, and then something like, the, the, if I show you the upper limit of everything, which there isn't really a limit. I could, you know, I could just change that into 500 if I wanted to. But um, uh, something like this would take my algorithm something like, like 10 minutes to sort of, I'll probably go and eat something. Uh, but if we keep it uh, low to like somewhere around 10 and 10, that's that's 100 cells. So uh, so it's not that it's not that. I'll, I'll show you guys how I surface that. And then another thing is um, what uh, it, this is very uh, common in in grasshopper circles, and it's a, called an attractor. And so if I show you guys, if you see the scaling of this thing, let me show you. See, I can, let me rotate it a little bit so it looks cooler. I could sort of uh, um, choose how big or how, 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 uh, how small those holes are, and also the thickness of that, of that uh, copper uh, design element. And then also I could change the balance of that. 
So you know, if, uh, if, you, if you think about just the sheer numbers of that, uh, there's 360 degrees, and then there's about like, like 20 different numbers in, in, the, in the columns and the, in the rows. So that's already uh, 140,000 different possible combinations. And then, and then we have the, we, you could change the, the balance of the attractor, and, and, and so you start having a lot more, uh, like a, a lot more possibilities of what is possible in that, in that time frame. Something like that. And then I have uh, uh, the wind spiral. And then this is one of the things that, uh, that are also so, like, beneficial about this type of workflow. Um, you know, by in traditional methods, I don't know how you would be able to do that because I'm also, I, you know, half my time is not, I'm not always doing parametric design. I'm also just doing basically uh, industrial design modeling. And, you know, to kind of get these sort of elements to work, uh, you know, you, that's, this is kind of the only way to do that. Um, and I got this wind spiral thing. And basically, as the hole goes through the form, it rotates 45 degrees. And, or I could change it to how many degrees I want. And then I have this, uh, uh, it's called a graph mapper. And when I move that around, I could, I could, change, I could change the look and balance of this, uh, of this wheel. Right? So, so now that I actually want to, uh, uh, let's say I want to see this model, I go back here, and then I uh, and I call it surface. And right now, what's happening is is it's just going through the regular, uh, the what I would go in traditional uh, methods of uh, of modeling this wheel. And um, uh, and I have a very uh, what's called like theoretical sort of modeling workflow where you first find the edges, then you add the crown, then you add the fillet, and then you do the rotation, and uh, and that's basically what's happening right now. And this uh, my algorithm is like 80%. Like eighty percent of the time, it makes it, so it might uh, it might fail. <laughs> so don't don't uh, don't judge me. Uh, this um, uh, grasshopper is still actually in beta. I think this is like version point nine. It's owned by Rhino, and it's uh, um, in Rhino six. It's gonna come uh, embedded in, and I think now it's rendering it. Hold on. Ah, there. See, there you go. And then, uh, so here, um, you know, what, else, what, was, what happens is that since it's always live, I'll start spitting out like a million images, and, um, and then I'll, uh, I'll see a rendering, and there's so many options that I lose it. You know, like, it's like I, I, I can't figure out how, how to get it back. Um, uh, and so what I did in, in the design, I added the, I added the main measurements, or the 98, 12, uh, so, this is, so that means that this cell goes to here, and, it's, and, it, and uh, it rotates 98 degrees, it's 12, uh, cells, no, 12 rows, and 10 cells. And then, uh, and then down here, you see that I have the, the measurements. And then, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very lazy, so I don't want to do anything in terms of uh, that has to be repeated. So here, if I, if I, I, I could choose the, basically the, the version I want, and then, I, and then when I press this button, if you, if you focus here. Wait, there you go. Oh, sorry. Okay, so what, what happened right there is actually it, it, it exported it, tessellated it, saved it, and named, and, and named it uh, in a specific folder. Um, and then if I go, uh, if I show you guys here, and then this is the different baking I have. Uh, so right now we're just doing rendering, so that, the, and that's a certain type of file. Or if it's going down, down the pipeline in terms of uh, industrial design, it's for CAD as an iGIS file. Or for 3D printing, uh, the, the actual, my whole algorithm, I, I actually wrote it there so I could print these out. So uh, if, it, if it doesn't fail in the first run, then that means I could print it. Um, and, um, and so that's basically how this, this system works. And then, um, and actually, I was, gonna, and I was gonna show you guys a bunch of ways to do that, but I actually figured out a way to implement this, this workflow with Substance Designer, so I kinda wanna show you guys that. And uh, so let me, let me do that real quick. Like that, design, and then let me open that file up. Tire tread. No, it's in here. So even though, um, uh, to me that wheel is very, I, I built that just to kind of showcase what is possible, you know, but that, the, that whole Veroni function, um, it, it starts looking very similar even though it has like a million different iterations. Um, but to me, that's not the, really the, the, the powerful part of this whole process. It's, it's like what I said before. You could change every aspect of it till the last second. So I wrote this, I wrote this uh, uh, algorithm that's a, that's a lot smaller. 
for my, my tread pattern. And then here, I could, I could change everything up and, and, uh, and sort of just kind of see what I want. You know, uh, let me show you guys the other stuff. I, and these are all just movements that I kind of decided what, what, I, what I wanted to do. And then here, it kind of fails a little bit, but it's fine. Like that. And then, uh, and then even the offset, right? And then um, when, I, when I bake this one out, uh, uh, Rhino actually has a really good uh, bakers for everything, uh, for uh, iGES or for CAD or for, uh, for uh, Illustrator. So uh, when I bake it, if I go here, it gives me a, a 512 by 512 uh, uh, a square. And, uh, and then that I, I export it as, as an Illustrator file. I open it in Illustrator, and then I save it as an SVG file for Designer. So then, if I if I go if I open up my my uh, Designer, and then this is and then so this is the the like a simple um, substance design I made. And, and this is not like I'm not that good at this, <laughs> but um, but I, I kind of want to showcase what, what what you can do. And then here you can see like the other ones I did. So if I go like that, see. So uh, let me, and then, uh, and then what I do is I sort of put everything together inside of Modo. So if I open my Modo up and I, and I, and I click play. And then see, this is kind of like where, where, uh, where, where um, I can sign, kind of see the end result. And if I, if, and I, if I uh, move this around, if you guys see in the, in the and I refresh it uh, here. I actually set it up so that, if you remember, we had that slider in my baking panel. I set it up so that it, Modo reads the frame it's in, looks at the file, finds the file that has that number, and then places it in the, in the, in the frame. And then that way I could kind of like go back and forth and, and, see, and see what, uh, what I want to what, what, what do. So if you see here, like that. See, and then I have to refresh the render engine. Uh, right. And then so that now, now you know, uh, uh, and all this could be done. You know, once my algorithms are, are written, I could do um, 20 iterations in half an hour. I could do a bunch of a bunch of different treads, and then um, and then when I go back, uh, when I, if we focus on the tread, and then we go back to uh, designer. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's crazy how um, uh, like let me we'll change it up for this one. Right? And all I have to do is go here, and then we go re-export outputs. <coughs> and then when I refresh it, did it change? Hold on. No. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll, um, it'll basically, um, Modo is always looking at the, at the um, let me open, uh, Modo is always looking at, at the same folder that that uh, that where where these these get exported out. So so now I so so this kind of like sort of closes the whole loop, where where if um, if my client all of a sudden goes, hey, you know what, we're changing tire size, or I didn't like that tread pattern, I didn't like that color, I didn't like that thickness, whatever change you want is uh, is easily done with just a bunch of sliders if you set up your workflow in that manner. So uh, yeah. I think that's basically it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so any questions? <laughs> Are there any questions? Yes? OK. Just give me a second. Hi, I was wondering. Um, why you chose Modo for that? Is it because it is constantly checking the files, or no? Uh, actually, um, it, it, it would, I would have when I was figuring how to solve that problem out. It would have been easier if I would have used uh, my, I think Maya or Cinema 4D. I actually had to write a, a pretty. It was actually kind of difficult to solve that problem. But the thing is, I really like Modo just in general. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, I started, I started my um, career. Well, when I was a kid, I used Blender. Then I moved to Maya. Then I went to Three Studio Max, uh, and um, and you know I just always 
check the different softwares, and to me, Modo was the one that I liked the most in terms of just their user interface. So uh, I always try to keep it in there. And then also I had um, uh, Octane, which uh, um, uh, is, is, was really valuable to me because um, uh, I'm using, you know, right now I'm using three GPUs to sort of render everything out, and uh, I didn't want to move over to Maya or, or anything like that. But to me, it's all the same. You know, if I didn't have Modo, I would, I would have figured it out in Maya. You know, it's all just uh, data manipulation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions here on the stage? Yes, at the front. Um, in the uh, Grasshopper, are you able to account for um, some of the engineering aspects like uh, uh, draft angles, depth of draw, minimum thicknesses? Yeah, um, uh, definitely. It has uh, all the, all the, uh, all, all of that is, is uh, within the, the parameters. Uh, obviously in this wheel, uh, since I, I, I wanted to sort of, I wanted to 3D print it, so I didn't have to worry about that, but I have written um, uh, many uh, algorithms for that. So, uh, so you could always, uh, like, I wonder if, I'm trying to remember if there's a, if there's a certain, place where you can kind of see the, n not so much in this model, but yeah, you, uh, every single aspect of, uh, especially for, because, uh, you know, that's what, that's what my main market is, uh, you know, making the models that can be produced. Uh, I have to figure out, uh, make sure that, the, that it doesn't get uh, locked in, a, in, the, in the model, in the production process, so you have to uh, add that into the algorithm. But yeah, it's definitely uh, any, any, uh, any tolerances you need or any um, constraints you have about it is, is a, uh, you can implement it into the into the algorithm. It's basically this algorithm is basically uh, it's it's what I do in a typical workflow in, inside. It's just that every step is bro is broken down, and um, so any aspect of it in terms of checking the angle or or giving a constraint of the angle, I could I could add it into it. It's basically pro visual programming. Awesome. Thank you. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Any final questions? We still have 10 minutes. If there's, oh, anyth okay. if there's anything else you wanted to show us, then. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, I have, um, uh, let me show you guys. Uh, let me see if I, if I have it open. Let me see. Because I have this really cool, uh, let me see. Did I save that? I had to save it. I have, a, um, a, a, because a Grasshopper has a, a, a really good, like I said before, for just graphic design. And I did one for, for uh, Marilyn. Uh, I have a Marilyn Monroe. Here, here you go. I haven't finished it yet, and um, and uh, and obviously I did. This isn't really uh, you know it isn't optimized I guess. And this uh, I guess if I go plain like that, right? And then I had to go here. I don't know. I'm not that good at uh, at. Uh, but yeah, uh, um, I could. I, I made I made this uh, SVG file inside of inside of Grasshopper, and uh, and then right now I'm trying to implement it into. Into uh, into my my work into into designer. So uh, that's a, that's a, that's a really good thing about about Grasshopper is that um, uh, it's not only it's not only for for three D modeling. You could also use image sampling to create all these um, all these different uh, uh, patterns like that. And um, and that you know since since this is based off, it's the same workflow. So I can I can um, I can put any picture I want in it. You know, and then I implement into that. And then that could export it into whatever scene I want, and um, and it really, um, it really starts opening up a lot of doors uh, for for the design for the texturing aspect of it. And um, let me see what else can I show you guys. Uh, yeah, I could I could show you guys also the the other the other other um, projects I've done with it. I guess let me see. Mm. A bunch of I have a bunch of render. Oh, I also did a, a what 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 this um. I made this uh, uh I made this this uh environment inside of a uh, grasshopper. That's what a grasshopper was for originally, uh, uh architecture, and uh, and you could and, and and that's the beauty about about this type of approach is that you just use math and and this, all all of this um. All of this this building was made using. The, let me see if I could open the. I'll, I'll open the. The actual file. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
Am I taking it? Oh yeah, it's opening. Where's the picture? Yeah, right. Right now, it's doing the it's doing the modeling. But yeah, this this is a, a and and this is just the the, the a sine wave uh, at different frequencies, uh, getting you know uh, uh, getting mixed and match, and then I r run a curve through it, and then I separate it into different surfaces, and uh, and then I do everything. Let's see if it actually works. Yeah, sometimes they could get really heavy uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the calculations. I've also done stuff where, if you notice, this is very much, um, uh, uh, I, can, I, can, I, can put random, I can put random numbers to sort of get all those tolerances, and then I can put it through a timer. So sometimes I'll just let it run overnight, and then I'll wake up to a, a whole bunch of different, different uh, design iterations. And also, you can, you can um, I could, I, I've done animations with it too. Um, I haven't had the time to actually run the, the, the animation through, through my wheel, but, um, but I've, done, I've done a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see if I, if I could find it. Yeah, I'll show you guys. See, this is another one. This, this was modeled in, uh, in uh, this was modeled in, inside, of, uh, inside of Grasshopper, and basically what I did is I told it, uh, keep, uh, run the calculation, which is, is, it was a pretty heavy calculation, and, 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 and move this parameter, run the calculation again, move that parameter, save it out, and then you could sort of make these really cool animations that are, uh, uh, I don't know if you would be able to do that in, in other, in, with other methods. And uh, let's see if it, if it worked. No, I don't think my, I don't think the Serenity one worked. Oh, did it work? Let's see. Where is it? No, I don't think it will. No. Uh -uh. Yeah, but but that's uh, uh, but that's basically my approach on on how I how I use algorithms for all this. No. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Let's You're have welcome. another round of applause. Oh, look. Like Okay, sorry. Okay. It actually oh, made it. It's working. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, and I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to move any of the of the of the measurements around because it's. I'm trying to figure out why it's so heavy. I, I don't know. I don't know where it kind of got a hiccup. But um, but yeah. So so see, all this all this building is is uh, it's completely um, it's completely uh, parametric, and. Uh, and then here you can see it has a little water channel, and uh, and then oh, and actually I was inspired. I, I released this one in in the in the fourth of July. Because uh, because actually I was inspired by the flag when I did it. Uh, here there's there's uh, there's 13 if you count them. There's 13 uh, uh, white and red stripes, and then up here is the same graphic layout of the stars, in the in the flag, and uh, oh yeah, you can see it from here. And, and yeah, so it really, it really, uh, it really starts to open up a lot of possibilities, and in, in not, not only in, uh, in industrial design, but in, uh, in in architecture and anything. And also, you know, you could apply that to to two uh, D uh, design using Substance Designer. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so twenty minute break, and we'll be back at four thirty for the finale session, which is an Ask Algorithmic Anything. So. Think of some tough questions for that. And we'll be drawing the prize winner after the Q&A.